I mean, as a business owner, if you walk in in the morning and you see a, ta or a, a, a table full of parts that have been fully machined, how happy are you going to be? How much do you know about the Fanic brand? Well, I'm here with Oliver to find out all about it and why they're showcasing at Mac 2024. So, Oliver, can you introduce yourself and also Fanic? Yeah, so my name is Oliver Selby. I'm responsible for sales at Fanic UK. So, Fanic UK, we sell CNC controls, robotic solutions, and also a range of machines, including the Robo Drill and Robo Cut, um, Vertical Machining Center, and Wire EDM. You do a bit of everything. We do a little bit of everything, yeah, which is beneficial for us, um, the fact that we're here, you know, we've got a huge customer base we can talk to. Well, before we get into why you're here in Mac, you actually are partnered with Mac and the MTA, and you have something a little bit special on the MTA stand, which we're actually gonna have a look at. So what Absolutely. can you tell me about your partnership with the MTA and Mac? Yeah. So we've been MTA members for a long, long time, and obviously as one of the world's largest manufacturers of CNC controls, we know many, many of the MTA um, uh, clients as well, you know, the members. Um, this year, the MTA have put a real big focus on automation. Uh, you'll see a lot of robots around the, around the show, around 70 in total um, wow. around the show, um, a huge mixture of different robots. What we wanted to show on the MTA and, and the MTC stand was how easy it is to actually automate older machine tools, which a lot of our UK manufacturers are still using, you know, we're very proud of the fact we keep our machines working. Now, this machine you can see behind me, is still white and yellow, which is the Fanuc colours, but how old is this machine? And don't forget, don't get me wrong, this has been running all week. Absolutely right. So um, this machine actually has got the date of uh, August 1992 on it, you know, so um, yeah, it's 32 years old or so, which is pretty impressive. Um, we had to do a little bit of work to keep it up to the current standards from a safety perspective, but it is still capable of running. It's still capable of, of cutting, machining. You're going to get run over by an AGV there. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it, what we wanted to show on this particular demonstration was the fact that you can still automate older machine tools. It's been done in quite a simple way with a, lo a low tech way of uh, managing the start, stop, the, the reset functions of the machine tool. We actually let the robot press the green button. That's better than trusting me. And I'd just like to say that, that machine is only two years younger than I am and it looks in better nick than I am. Well, I don't believe that, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, like you said, there's a lot of people in the UK with older machines who worry they can't automate and with the skills gap and the skills shortage, automation is becoming a very big thing in UK manufacturing. So it's great that you have a solution that not only benefits people with brand new machines, brand new technology, yeah. but also machines they've had for 30 plus years. Absolutely right. So again, we're very proud of the fact we do keep machines running. Of course, we've got um, contracts that are in place with those bigger um, UK manufacturers that need to keep running. Um, certainly in, in, in um, applications and industries like aerospace, have very, very long um, project times, build times and contracts that are in place. So we have to keep, keep the machines going for that length of time. But for those customers that actually do have shorter term contracts, um, it's the actual flexibility that automation is now bringing them that they can actually take advantage of. So, and it's important to actually make use of the, the high levels of technology that are involved in, in um, keeping those machines flexible um, when we actually look at those um, or the, the, the adoption of automation. So in, including things like vision systems to make um, part change over very quick making sure that the actual control systems are very easy and flexible to, to connect to different machines. That's what gives the, um, the, um, the, the adoption of robotics on older machine tools um, a way forward. And talking of technology, I'd like to actually now move back over to your stand because as well as doing having new technology for older machines, yep. you've actually brought a Fanac Robo Drill, which we all know. But you've actually brought new technology to your newest machines as well. Yep. And they're actually showcasing turning on a milling machine. Yeah, absolutely right. So um, technology that's been developed in Japan, along with Nikon, another MTA partner. Um, it's a technology that we think is going to revolutionize, particularly some markets, some industries, um, in that we can actually remove some of the ops that you may have had to have done on a second machine or a third machine, possibly. To, to be done on one machine, 
relatively low cost machine or a, a good value machine, you know, um, and actually ensure that the, the whole or the, the, all the ops can be covered by off on one machine. And let's be honest, look at the benefits in that. If yeah. you're using two or three machines, that means you've got to clock that job up two or three times. Absolutely right. You give the operator a chance to make do something wrong. And don't get me wrong, this part could be thousands and thousands of pounds. Absolutely if you can right. do it all in one go, it's Absolutely. going to be right. But, and it's just going to be better in the end of the day. Absolutely right. So you reduce the tooling cost, you know, the fixturing cost, the setup times. So they can all be programmed on CAM, which makes a huge, huge difference. So it's a one hit wonder. And the thing is, it's, it's like what you've just said, is what people now need to be looking at. It's all right saying, yeah, but it's, a, it's an expense. It's an expense to have a trunnion put on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. But look at the savings you will make in the long run, or even absolutely actually right. the short run, yeah, looking at what right. you've got on this machine. Absolutely right. So where we see a great advantage with the solution from Nikin, um, and where we're going to focus it this year is actually in aerospace. So we see, um, we've got at the end of the year, the Farm Bray Air Show or in July. Um, it's coming around sooner than you think. Um, for that, you see a huge um, effort being put in place by the Farnborough organizers to um, focus on eVTOL, so electric vertical takeoff and landing, you know, the drones, you know. <laughs> Each of those will require motors or, or, or engines to be put in place. We see this as an absolutely perfect um, platform to develop the, the machining technology that will be involved in actually creating those motors for drones. You know, so we have turning, we have milling, we put in place really high tolerance um, machining operations and metrology operations in the same machine. And let's be honest, something else on the, the forefront of everyone's mind right now is being green. Absolutely and you right. have a great system on this machine to show people how much energy you're using and how they can actually help themselves be more energy efficient. Absolutely right. So every infinite machine is designed to be energy efficient, to be um, the best it can be in class. Okay, so that's from robots through to CNC controls through to the injection molding machines we do. Yeah, so um, it's important that we actually take note and take stock of actually the, the energy we're using. I think this machine here is, is using about three kilowatt hours. It's, it's, it's very, very low energy consumption, even at, at, in, at full tilt, you know. So it's more energy efficient, it's more productive, and now you can do more things on it we really need to be shouting about this and showing people what they're missing out on. Absolutely right. So I would say they're only missing out in the UK. Globally, we've sold many, many of these machines. So just over 300,000 of these particular rover drills have been sold globally. You know, that's a huge, huge number for one particular machine type. And you must be really proud of that. Absolutely right, yeah. Most customers that come over the booth get told that, absolutely. <laughs> now, we've talked about your older machines. We've talked about your newer machines. Yeah. Well, you've got some demos on your stand here at Mike yep. that I'd like to go through as well. So if we start first on the left, yep. tell me what's going on. What have you automated here? So this is actually a new technology from Fanuc, um, trying to make it easier to adopt robotics into your machine shop. So for example, you will have machine setters that will know um, the CNC, the G code, the M code programming language. Uh, but how do you make it easy for them to adopt robotics? How do you make it easy for them to not be so worried and, and um, ensure that they have the, the, um, the, um, the, the positive way of approaching robotics in their, in their business the way they want, they want to go forward? So we, what we've done here is actually give them, them the opportunity to run a second path as part of their CNC machine, but that path is the robot itself. So even you, Tom, might better do it. Wow, thank you for that. <laughs> I don't know why I always have, people have a go at me for this, but so now, Normally, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you are the, the robot experts, okay. but normally you would have your CNC control to run your machine and then a second control to run your robot. Yes. But now it all runs through one system, which also, as well as being making it easier for the programmer, must make it quicker as well, because you're only programming at one station. Absolutely right. So um, while it's quicker, I don't know. You know, it's, um, I can program a robot pretty quick. Um, I've I seen what you can program. <laughs> Yeah, so um, it does give you, give you the option as a machine setter to be able to set that robot in motion. You know, so from one, one part to the next to the next, where you've got um, low volume or high mix parts running through a particular machine, and you want to change the way the robot operates, it gives the robot, or, sorry, the machine setter, the ability to do that. Which again, keeps that machine running, keeps the machine, um, gives the potential 
for the machine to run an overnight shift. Yeah, to get an extra shift is quite worth its while right now, yeah? Well, that's it. And, and, and like you said, running overnight, running lights out. Yeah. Everybody wants to run lights out because Absolutely. that's where you make the most money. It's, uh, let's, let's, let's not beat around the bush. When your machine's running at work, it's yep. making money. Yep. But also, your staff's there taking that money. Exactly. But if you're coming overnight, yep. your machine's making money yep. and you're not losing anything. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as a business owner, if you walk in in the morning and you see a, ta or a, a, a table full of parts that have been fully machined, how happy are you going to be? Well, that's it. You're going to love it, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely now, right. Now, let's move on because I'm conscious of time. Yep. But you actually have another demo over here, which yep. looks quite impressive. It's quite a, a, yep. quite a big demo. Yep. So what's going on over here? So this is actually quite revolutionary. Um, so what I love that word. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> What we've done here is we've worked with the company Electro Impact. They're a company based up in, um, next to Airbus in Broughton. Um, and what they've done is they've taken a manual operation in the drilling of air structure, okay? So drilling through the actual um, the skin or the, the, um, the air surface into the actual the, the structure below, which is normally a manual process, okay? And they've applied it, the same process but using a robot uh, or a cobot in this particular case. But they've used quite a lot of tools around the way in which the um, the cobot functions to make it um, very very reliable and um, technologically advanced. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's an amazing way forward. Now I see some real advantages with this yeah. just by looking at this earlier. Obviously, they're not small holes. You're looking. No. Don't get me wrong, 25 mil, maybe out slightly. Yeah. But for you to drill them each manually. Yeah, so that's maybe a little bit where you're wrong, Tom. So what you've actually got there is actually the a drill jig in front of the parts that will be drilled. Okay. So what you see here is that the, the, the big holes are actually holes where a mandrel fits, and then you clamp up inside the hole and you actually drill through the middle of the mandrel. But that's a known technology in aerospace. It's it's a it's a company called Lubering who produce that end of arm tool or the, the tooling for that, whether that's done manually or with a robot. Um, and it's a known technology because that drill jig gives you the accuracy you need against your airframe or your air structure, okay? And you're just applying the same technology using a robot in this case. But then obviously you've still got the, if you're doing this manually, you've still got the manual effort of drilling through, Absolutely. which, yeah, don't get wrong, by the end of the day, you must have quite oh, yeah, a big yeah. arm. Absolute, so absolutely right, yeah. This must give the person who is doing it must yeah. feel so much better at the end of the day and yeah. surely that's going to help with production because let's be honest at the start of the day when you're yeah. feeling big and fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to be going at it but by yeah. the end of the day you're going to slow down Absolutely but with this right. you're going to keep yeah. the same so speed up all day the benefit we see here is that actually that one trained operator who's used to fitting jigs to the, to the airframe before he starts drilling can still fit jigs but he can also then deploy the robot on one jig, two jigs, three jigs, four jigs, that one operator could be actually running production over four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten robots and getting more and more output, yeah? So it just, it's just a way of making sure that the right skills and the right value add processes as part of the production methods are used in the right way. And I think that's a really good way to end this video that yeah. Fana can't just about making your life easier on a control right. or on a machine there's manual processes yep. that can also be done with a robot to make it easier faster more reliable yep. and that you guys have a solution for everything absolutely right so we, we try and take away the dirty the dull and dangerous jobs that people are doing right now and try and automate them that's what we're here for